Good evening and welcome everyone to our public hearing tonight. This is a public hearing for a permit application for a proposed driveway through a wetland. Uh, my name is Ryan Blazik. I'm with Eagles Environmental Support Division. I'm gonna be helping by moderating the public hearing today. Uh, before we get started uh, with our other Eagle staff who are on the line, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through some logistics. All right, so this is kind of the agenda for tonight. Um, the big thing to know is that the evening hearing tonight is gonna to be in two parts. The first part is gonna be an informational session. There's gonna be information on the, per the permit application, the proposed project, and there will be a question and answer session. And we're gonna keep the, try to keep the presentation about 10 minutes um, and then wrap up the Q&A session at around 6.30 to give people enough time um, to make their statement for the second part, which is the official hearing part. That's where you're gonna have a chance to make a statement for the record on this permit application. Uh, and we'll go through how to do that a little bit later. And then we'll also talk about where to get other, um, uh, other information and who to contact with further questions. For those of you not familiar with uh, the Zoom or the Zoom toolbar um, or Zoom webinars, all lines are muted during the, the public hearing today. So you'll be able to hear us, but we won't be able to hear you um, unless you're making your statement. And again, we'll talk about that later. Um, if you have questions, you can submit those in the question box in the Zoom toolbar uh, for the presentation. So we're gonna have the presentation and then a question and answer period. And so that will be your opportunity to ask questions on this project. Uh, you can also raise your virtual hand and we'll go through that a little bit later. And then also just to let you know, we are recording this public hearing. Uh, it'll be on our YouTube channel in a couple of days so you can review it when it's posted. So with that, I would like to invite Carol Valor, who's the hearings officer for the public hearing tonight to go ahead and uh, introduce herself and we'll go ahead and kick off the hearing. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Carol Baller, and I work with Water Resources Division at the Lansing District. Mary Vanderlaan is also attending tonight. She's my supervisor. And uh, we have a couple other staff there sitting in tonight just for observation purposes. Uh, we are going to um, uh, go over briefly what the project looks like. We're just looking at some slides. I believe, Ryan, that's the next step, is it not? Yep, that's correct. So I'll, I have some slides here and then Carol, if you just wanna go through them and let me know when you want the slide changed. Okay, very good, go ahead. Uh, the project is located out on the west side of DeWitt, uh, the intersection of, I believe, Lowell and West Herbison Road. It's on the south and west or southeasterly corner. It's a 5.4 acre parcel there um, that is uh, not all, all the way up to the intersection. Um, next slide. Uh, there's an upland portion on the parcel that's off to the uh, roadside. And then um, the uh, pond, as you can see, goes across the parcel uh, with a narrow kind of a, a narrow area, of, which, which is actually still um, the hill drain actually tra traveling through the pond through that narrows. And then it goes into an upland side on the eastern portion of the parcel where the home is located on the south and east corner. Next slide. This is a little bit closer view of the same location. Uh, some contour lines showing you what this is laid out. Um, next slide. A little bit more detailed view. There's a 12 foot wide driveway approximately 14 foot at the base width and it's approximately 50 feet long for the segment of driveway that will be located within wetland itself. There will be a uh, 12 inch 20, 20 foot long um, steel culvert that's proposed for this to, uh, to convey water and approximately 40 cubic yards of backfill will be used for the uh, road itself within the wetland itself. Next slide. Uh, and that's another version of this, if, in case you're colorblind. This is black and white, cross section of the same. And we can go to the next slide. And next. Survey of the property. I believe it was updated in 2019. And next slide again. 
Uh, last slide is uh, from the Michigan Health Department. There was a septic permit that was issued for the site. If you'll notice, there's a, a kind of an orange brown small segment in the middle of this slide. Um, that is the secondary uh, septic field. And there's a conduit within the actual driveway that will go through the wetland as well that's proposed for the backup septic in case that ever has to be tapped into. Um, the remaining parts of the of what you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of um, shading in this. You see the blue, the gray shading. Uh, those are setbacks that are from power lines, uh, water feature setbacks, and I believe there's one other. No, that's it. That's just the water feature setback and the power line setback. I think if there's anything more to say about that, that'll come from John, who is uh, who's also attending tonight. Uh, next slide. Back to you, Ryan. All right, thanks, Carol. Yeah, like you had mentioned, I believe we have John uh, Fifferak on the line tonight, uh, who is, is representing the project. I was just wondering if John had anything additional to say related to the presentation before we move on to question and answer. So um, I'm gonna try to unmute you, John. John, looks like you're unmuted on, on our end. Just wanna see if you had anything to add here. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. Yeah, we can hear you, John. Oh, you can hear me, okay. Um, is, is this the time for me to make any statement or just uh, to comment on what's been said so far? Yeah, this is just a comment on, we will have a chance a little bit later on to make the actual statement for the record. No, I, I don't think I have anything to say at this point in time. I'll, I'll have a, a statement when we're ready. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So at this point, we're going to start the question and answer for any questions we have. Um, there's basically two ways that you can ask a question. If you have one, you can submit your question in the question and answer box, which you'll see at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. You go ahead and type your question in, um, or you can click the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. And uh, what we'll do, just like we did with John, is we'll unmute you from our end. You'll be able to unmute yourself, and then you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, the type, the pound two is for people on the phone, but it doesn't appear like we have any phone participants at this moment. So with that, if anybody has a question uh, before we move on to the next part of the public hearing, uh, please raise your hand. Or, or type something or type a question in the Q&A box. Um, we'll give you a couple, couple seconds, uh, a few more seconds to do that if you would like. Um, if we don't get any questions, uh, the next part of the public hearing is where we actually do the public hearing part, where you'll have your chance for the record to make a statement uh, related to this project. So we'll go ahead and give that a couple seconds. Uh, I'm also gonna talk about uh, other ways to make a comment. So if you don't want to make a comment or if you have questions that come up afterwards, I'll provide contact info. Uh, we'll go through that here in a little bit too. All right, so with that, I'm not seeing any hands raised and I'm not seeing any questions in the Q&A box. So we can go ahead um, if there aren't any questions on the project, we can go ahead and move on to the next part of the hearing. But before we do that, I just wanna go through other ways to make an official comment in case you just wanted to listen in tonight and didn't wanna make your comment. Um, you can make your comment through our My Water system. And I believe Matt Tomlinson, who's on the line, is going to put that link to the My Water system in the chat for you all um, today, um, or by mail. Um, and you can mail your comments to Eagle Water Resources Division, Lansing District Office, and that's 2525 West Elegant Street, Lansing, Michigan, 48909. And then the comment period after the public hearing is gonna last for 10 days. Uh, which is going to be February 7th. So you have until February 7th to go ahead. All right, so I do have, okay, I have one question, and I want to make sure since we didn't have any other questions, before we read the hearing statement and get started, I'll go ahead and read this 
question. So it is, has an environmental study been performed or requested? So uh, Carol, if you wouldn't mind uh, popping your camera back on, uh, if you're able to address this question. That was listed in uh, the public notice comments. It was a request for a environmental study for the site. Yes, it was requested. Okay, so it was one requested, but there hasn't been one performed. Correct. All right. All right. Thank you for providing that question. Any any others before we move on? Because the next slide is going to be where we st actually start the public hearing, and um, in the public hearing we won't be providing responses to the statement. It's pretty much you, you be able to make your statement for the record, and Carol is going to read some more information on that. All right. So I'm not seeing any other questions. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next part. All right, as mentioned, this is where we, we start the official public hearing portion. Um, and so I'd like to invite Carol to go ahead and kick it off uh, with the opening statement. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Carol Valor. I'm the Lansing District Representative Water Resources Division uh, at Eagle, and I'll be serving as the officer for the evening for file number HPB73Z989Z6N. With me tonight also is Mary Vanderlaan, my supervisor, Jeff Pierce, Ryan Blazik, and other a staff attending just for observation purposes. To describe how this is conducted, I'll begin with some background information on why we're here tonight, and then describe the purpose of the hearing and how your comments will be used. And following that, I'll outline the procedures under which we will take your comments and then describe what will happen after tonight's hearing. It will then be time for you to provide comments. We will spend the majority of the time listening to your comments and recording those. And at the end of the hearing, I'll provide a short summary and closing. By way of background information, the Water Resources Division is responsible for administering a variety of programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and the Great Lakes. And these programs regulate certain activities such as dredging, filling, uh, projects that impact streams, wetlands, dams, marinas, uh, and so on. Um, the, the laws governing these responsibilities is the Natural Resource and Environmental Protection Act of 1994, PA 451, as amended Act 451. We are here tonight because Christine Chamberino has proposed the following. The applicant proposes to construct a driveway through wetland associated with Hill Drain for the purpose of providing access to an upland residential building site. Note that the project scope was revised since the public notice of October 12, 2021, and new plans were submitted on January 19, 2022. The project includes a 12 inch diameter, 20 foot long culvert and 40 cubic yards of backfill to cross through a 50 foot long, 14 foot wide footprint within wetlands with the driveway with a height of two feet above existing grade and impacting 0 0.02 acres of wetlands. For the purpose, in the, sorry. In order for a permit to be granted, Eagle must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet certain criteria set forth by parts 301 and 303 of Act 451. The provisions of part 301, inland lakes and streams of, of Act 451. Uh, Eagle is charged to make the following consideration as required by sections 30106 of part 301. The department shall issue a permit if it finds that a structure or project will not adversely affect public trust or riparian rights. And the department shall not grant a permit if the proposed project or structure will unlawfully impair or destroy any of the waters or natural resources of the state. When reviewing an application for permit under provisions 303, the Wetland Protection Act, 451. Eagle is charged to make the following indications as required by section 30311 of part 303. A permit or for an activity listed in section 30304 shall not be approved unless the department determines that the issuance of the permit is in the public interest, that the permit is otherwise necessary to realize the benefits derived from the activity, and that the activity is otherwise lawful. A permit shall not be issued unless it is shown that an unacceptable disruption 
will not result to the aquatic resources and the permit shall not be issued unless the applicant also shows either of the following, that the proposed activity is primarily dependent upon being located in wetland and a feasible and prudent alternative does not exist. The, pur the purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in this project the opportunity to provide information that Eagle can use in making the decision whether or not to issue this permit. Please recognize that EGLE can only use the information you provide if it relates to the criteria that EGLE must use in making this permit decision. Some of you may simply want to express our support and opposition to the project. Uh, we will be happy to make note of your position, but please understand that EGLE is by law not allowed to base a decision on whether or not there is widespread, widespread support or opposition to a project. In just a moment, I will outline the procedures we'll use for taking your comments, but before I do so, I need to mention that this Notice of this hearing was published in the Lansing State Journal on January 13th, 2022. As you logged in this evening, you were given the opportunity to indicate if you would be submitting verbal comments and we'll call upon you, uh, those of you who wish to speak tonight, to ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we follow the following steps. First, the applicant and the consultant will have their opportunity to describe the project. I will present the slides of the project, which as you've already seen some of these slides, we can re-present those. And, and take some questions. And I will call on those who have indicated in the public notice comments, um, a public notice that they would like to speak in general in order to, I'm sorry, this is something that's just a little template that's uh, not applicable here. We will be calling on people who have asked to be, make a statement. So when your name is called, please provide your statement. And if you have written comments or materials that you would like to present, you can submit those through the My Water Systems or by email. You, you can, as you begin your comments, please tell us your name and any group or association that you're representing. Each person will be given about three to five minutes to comment. Please begin wrapping up those comments within your allotted time, and we'll give you a note in case uh, you're going over. I ask that we all be courteous and respectful to each other tonight. Only one person will be speaking at a time. Please do not interrupt, and please also recognize that Eagle staff here is tonight to provide this fair opportunity for you to express comments on the project and to listen to those comments. The hearing is being recorded. Your comments will be part of the information that we will consider in making the decision on whether or not to issue the proposed permit for the project. The public, noted, the public comment period for this public hearing is open for 10 days, starting today and ending on February the 7th. Additional information and comments submitted in writing and during this 10 day comment period will also be considered within this decision. Additional information and comments may be submitted to Mary Vanderlaan or Carol Valor via email or US Postal Service uh, sent to the Lansing District Office, 525 West Allegan Street, first floor South Tower, Lansing, Michigan, 48933. Following the close of the public comment period, EGLE will make a decision to either permit the project as proposed or with modifications, or will send a denial. Uh, you may find out what the decision is by checking at uh, My Water's website um, and searching under the permit number HPV73Z989Z6N. Thank you for your attention. I'll now ask the applicant to describe the project and we'll begin calling names for those who have indicated they would like to make a statement. Thank you. And thanks, Carol. Carol. <clears throat> you know, as Carol mentioned, we did kind of did the question and answer um, part of the project and the, the uh, presentation part a little bit earlier. This is, so now we're gonna start the public hearing portion. We'll have a chance to make a statement. And but Carol had mentioned, well, the way we'll do this is um, I have the list of people who will, who have indicated during registration that they wanted to make a statement. I have a list of three people. We will go through them first. Um, and then if there is anybody else uh, who is on the line who would like to make a statement, everyone will have an opportunity. There'd be one statement per person. Um, but if you wanna make a statement and you're on the line and uh, you're not one of these three names, then you can just raise your virtual hand uh, in, in Zoom. And you'll see that at the bottom of the screen, it's a hand icon. Um, and then we will call on you, unmute you, you can unmute yourself, and then you can make your statement. Again, please uh, list your name and any, anybody you represent or any organization you represent, if you have one. Um, and then we'll have, uh, give you five minutes. Okay, Carol said three to five, so we'll go with five, five minutes, and I'll give you about a, a one minute heads up when you're getting close to five minutes. 
And so with that, let's see here. Our first person is John Fifferak. So John, we're gonna go ahead and find you uh, in the participant list and unmute you again. How are we doing? Yep, there you are. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, thank Thanks, you very John. Much. You you can go ahead and start whenever you're ready. All right. I, I'm John Fiferic. I'm the, the lawyer for uh, Christina Tamborino. Um, she should also be on the on the line, uh, and so should Maynard Berry. I, this is an unusual process for me when I can't see who is all in the in the crowd, so to speak. But they may have some comments or may wish to clarify anything that I say that might not be quite accurate. Uh, just a little background. Christina purchased the property in December of um, 2019. Uh, when she did that, she was aware that there was a permit uh, to uh, basically do what she's asking to do right now that was issued in uh, December, I'm sorry, was issued in 2005. That would allow a driveway to be constructed to get to the, the uplands further to the south on the property. Uh, that permit allowed for the placement of 50 yards of uh, film and a 36 foot long, 24 inch diameter, diameter culvert within the wetlands uh, to construct a driveway with a 12 foot top uh, crossing approximately 20 feet of the wetland. Um, Christina prepared and submitted the application on her own um, using to a great extent the information that she had available from the earlier permit process and with some things updated. Uh, as I got involved in the process and, and, and looked at things and, and, and talked to Carol, it was realized that there had been some confusion as to what was being proposed, uh, in particular as far as the, uh, uh, how large of a project uh, was, was being considered. Uh, so uh, Mr. Berry was engage, again, again engaged to go back to the site, take some measurements, provide updated or correct sketches, and those were provided. So as Carol mentioned, the, the proposal will consist of approximately uh, 40 cubic yards of clean fill. The, the, the driveway within the, or within the driveway um, will be a, a, a 20 foot long, 12 inch diameter culvert. We're gonna cross the wetland of approximately 22 feet uh, with a top, uh, 12 foot top. Uh, there will be an approximate impact of 630 square feet or 0 0.03 acres of wetland. So it's a very, very small project. The, the 12 inch diameter culvert is a result of the Clinton County Train Commissioner's requirement to match the diameter of the culvert under the herbis and drain to the Northeast uh, to preserve proper function of the hill drain. Um, the drain commissioner's requirement is to avoid any backup and flow and to allow the drain to maintain its current hydrology. Uh, as to the wetlands itself, uh, there, there's, there's going to be virtually no impact, if any. This is not a pristine uh, wetland. Uh, it, it's already impacted to some extent by the surrounding development of homes and farmland. There's nothing unique about it. Uh, we do recognize that there um, was some concern regarding, I believe it's pronounced blandings, turtles, and uh, some rattlesnakes as a possible species in the area. Uh, neither one of those are endangered or threatened species. And uh, there are no known threatened or endangered species uh, in this environment. Uh, on the issue of the concern that was raised regarding uh, the turtles and the snakes, I know that DNR has weighed in on this. Um, and as I understand it, they have concluded that that is not something that they are concerned with, but to the extent that they, they, they are observed, in particular the, the, the turtle uh, species is observed, that we uh, employ or deploy uh, best management practices. And then I was given a copy of an email that made specific citations to those best management practices for uh, reptiles and amphibians. To the extent that um, staff believes it's necessary to do so, to the extent that uh, the turtles are observed or whatnot, and we do agree to such a condition in the permit. Uh, again, we don't- You have about a minute left, John. Okay. Um, there, as far as alternative um, 
locations on the property. There, 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 there isn't anything on the, on the north side of the property. There is some upland closer to Herbison Road. That's just uh, too small and severely limited as to what can be done. Um, there's um, there's a, um, various setbacks imposed by the township. There's a 50 foot setback from Herbison Road requirement. There's a, um, a recommended 50 foot setback from any of the wetlands. Uh, just say then that particular area is surrounded on three sides by wetlands. Um, there wouldn't be a, per, a basement that would be permitted in that location because of the concern with water. Uh, the location is also uh, encumbered by the consumer's energy easement that was referenced earlier. That easement uh, runs and, parallel to you're at, you're at five. You have five minutes, John. Can you wrap it up? Okay, I, I'm going to do that. There's a 250 foot easement that's parallel with the road. Uh, runs 250 feet into the property, into this upland area. And it also allows for laterals uh, going into the property and there are poles already in there. So again, this is all encumbrances upon that uh, northern uh, upland area. Uh, we also took a look at the issue of, uh, of a different type of structure. And John, the, I, I, hate to, I hate to cut you off, but we need to give everybody equal amount of time. So we're going to have to move on to the next person. A, bri a bridge is too expensive. If you have any questions, you can come back. All right, thank you, John. Thanks for the comment. All right. And the next person we have is John Moss. So, John, we're going to go ahead and unmute you. All right, it looks like you're unmuted on our end. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and then go ahead and uh, start whenever you're ready. Yes, uh, my name is John Moz, and my address is 5900 West Herbison Road, DeWitt. I am concerned uh, about the impact uh, this project, this proposed project would have on the wetland, uh, considering the uses that are made of this wetland by migratory species. And as was mentioned, the uh, uh, presence of the Blanding's turtle and the possibility of the presence of a uh, um, rattlesnake uh, population. Uh, the presence of a wetland of this nature is taken for granted by some and not noticed as seriously by others uh, when in fact uh, it serves a real purpose in, in the migratory patterns of uh, various species passing through this area. Um, to disturb this wetland and the uh, magnitude that's being proposed would render uh, permanent damage to the nature of, of the area, the wetland area. And uh, in terms of an alternative, there are alternatives available um, uh, to access the upland portion to the east. Um, it would require some negotiation with a neighboring property owner, but that certainly could be accomplished without. The... You might want to speak up a little bit, John. We can, we can hear you, but it's faint. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get closer here. Um, alternatives are available in terms of uh, an easement on the neighboring property to the east of this. Uh, property in question and uh, that sort of a, an alternative could be pursued further. Um, it's just a, a harm to a wetland of this uh, sort uh, is uh, irreparable once it's accomplished and like I said uh, I think people sort of take a wetland of this uh, nature for granted until it's uh, disturbed or until it's gone and uh, I would strongly object to the construction or the granting of this uh, permit for this uh, project. Uh, I think other alternatives could be pursued and uh, I would hope the Eagle would seriously consider uh, the denial of this application. Uh, and I also would like to have the opportunity to submit written comments at a later date. You mentioned a uh, contact, uh, uh, if you could repeat that at some point. Uh, I can jot that down. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. 
Thank you for your comments, John. Yeah, we'll have more information a little bit later on. Thank you. All right, next uh, next on my list, and this is the last one on the pre-registration that I have in front of me, Paul Simons or Simmons, Paul Simmons. All right, we're gonna look for you here, Paul, and unmute you on our end. All right, looks like you're unmuted. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and then you can start your comment whenever you're ready. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, <clears throat> one of my concerns, obviously, I was the one who was inquiring on the um, study being done on the environment. And the few years that I've been here, I'm hearing that the Blanding's turtle are not a concern, but and this list in front of me from your own Eagle website, it's a double star state endangered species along with the um, painted turtles, things like that. Um, some other things I've witnessed out here that are on this list, and I actually have some video of some of these things, is we have several mink in this population. They're not quite as serious on this list. Um, at one point, I did live on this property in a, actually, believe it or not, in a hammock to study what was going on here because of the unique flora of this pond that I have not seen anywhere in this area. I mean, the vegetation itself, no one's thinking about this vegetation. It's a very shallow pond. You have very unique vegetation that brings in red-winged blackbirds, which is another thing that's listed on here for breeding. Um, muskrats, which I'm not really as concerned about is another protected thing on here. And also for migratory birds, we're seeing the, um, Grebes, which is a single star state threatened species out here, and they are mating, having babies and and, and whatnot, obviously. Um, <clears throat> that being said, we got the herons. Uh, just kind of going through this list. Um, I can't speak for some of them because I don't 100% know my species that well. That's why I wanted the environmental study done. Um, another question I had was I already mentioned it was the easement thing to see if they could bypass taking that portion of the land and uh, filling it in. Um, that being said, I know this is supposed to be relatively just about the driveway portion of it, but I'd also like to have someone look into the effects of the whole project because it's using up, from what I can tell on my on your uh, paperwork, it's taken up about 90% of this land over there, the, the trees and stuff. When we built this property across from it, I mean, we had to bring in $44,000 worth of dirt to do this because it's, it's not really that well of a setting for a walkout. And I do have pictures of this and I'm afraid there's gonna be an impact to this out here as I've seen that even my own mistakes of doing this place has. So those are some of my concerns. Um, not just that, but you know, also I'm kind of got a concern with the style of drain field that's being used. It looks like it's a circulatory engineered field. I would like to get more information on that, the effectiveness of those, the lifespan of them. And the other thing I thought was kind of strange was that the reserve drain fields on the other side of this um, wetland and what impact that would have. And all in all, from what I can tell on uh, the uh, GIS maps, this is gonna take out about a quarter of the environment around this wetland. So I would like, personally, I would like to hire someone to do an environmental study on this and to uh, really double check if, even about the vegetation, because the vegetation is bringing a lot of stuff in here that's unique to this area that I haven't seen in the 48 years I've been alive in Michigan. Um, I do have other properties on water and stuff like that. It's very unique and I think it should be seen. Um, you got about a minute left, Paul. Yep, yeah, thank you. Um, so that being said, um, we also have, you know, several mi migratory birds. You've got herons. Um, I'm kind of going through this list on here. Um, I, I couldn't tell you about the frogs. There's obviously a lot of frogs and stuff like that. I'm not sure if I'm so concerned about that. But um, 
I'd really like to see them try to approach an easement and then avoid some of the damage over there. I mean, right now it's going to be a clear cut, but I mean, you got a 32 foot window to build this house. And when I built mine, I had to have a 30 foot circle around that. So that's, you're talking 90 foot of clearing of this lot and lots of fill to bring in. And uh, this is a very shallow pond. I'd, I'd be surprised if it's more than a foot deep through 90% of this pond. And that's where you're seeing all the green growth and stuff, but that I can provide pictures of at another time. Obviously I can't do it online. Andy, you're at, you're at five minutes, so uh, please try to wrap it up, Paul. Yep. Um, that being said, you know, let's just find out what anyone else has to say, and then maybe we can reconvene and uh, go over some of these options and concerns with someone who's better trained than me that's just a plumber. Okay, thanks for, thanks for your comment, Paul. All right, so now we're going to open it up to anyone uh, else who is on the line right now who would like to make a comment. All you have to do is raise your virtual hand in Zoom, and uh, what we'll do is we'll call on you one at a time uh, in turn. So I do have a hand raised, uh, Chris Worm. So Chris, we're going to go ahead and unmute, uh, unmute you on our end, and it looks like you're unmuted, so you can unmute yourself. Uh, go ahead and make your comment um, and we'll, whenever you're ready. Can you hear me okay, Ryan? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, just real quick, um, just to echo what John and Paul have said, um, you know, I tell everybody where I, that, that, that I know that, um, you know, I, I, truly, I truly feel like I live on a wildlife, wildlife preserve out here. Um, the amount of birds and animals and all the things that come through these prop this property every day um, is truly amazing. And I am very concerned about um, having a house, um, you know, another house built out behind me here um, and how that's going to affect, um, you know, the ecosystem and the pond and all these different things. Um, you know, I, I did also bring up the, po the point in my written comments about an environmental study. I truly feel that that needs to be done. Um, I also feel that, um, you know, an easement needs to be, you know, some other type of option besides dropping a big pipe in the water um, needs to be explored. Um, you know, it's just, again, like John Moss said, there, it is truly a unique, unique environment out here um the people that live out here we live out here for a reason because we love it we love the wildlife and um you know quite frankly we're going to stick up for it and um you know just because and you know i don't want to point fingers at, at, at the uh the attorney but just because you say it's not going to impact anything that doesn't mean anything to me i live it out here every day and it's awesome and to just to just say, you know, it's not going to impact it, and let's just uh, move on and go ahead and do the build. You know, that's I think I think we need to take some time here and reevaluate the whole situation, and uh, you know, and 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 go from there. So that's really all I have to say. Um, love it out here. It is a very unique a unique experience. Um, you know, and I, I I would implore you to come out and take a look too um, for you folks at Eagle. And, 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 and just have a look and see. Um, so those are my comments for tonight. All right, thanks for your comments, Chris. All right, is there anybody else on the line who would like to make a comment? Uh, I don't have any other hands raised at this point, but we'll, I'll give it another couple seconds here in case anybody changes their mind or wants to make a comment. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, show that screen again on other ways to make a comment. Um, uh, here next, I have Paul uh, with his hand raised. And, and Paul, before we unmute you, just wanna let you know, you, you can only make one comment, but if you have somebody else who is on the line at your household, they can, they can make a comment. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, or um, Matt, if you wouldn't mind unmuting. All right, you can unmute yourself. Do you have somebody else there, Paul? No, this is actually just one more from myself. And just yeah. to describe yeah. the uniqueness uh, of how- Paul, everybody gets one chance to make a comment. And if you have additional comments, what we'll do is we'll have, uh, I'll show you the, the information on the screen where you can submit written comments or you can contact uh, Carol to talk to her uh, with any follow-up questions. Okay. So it's, so it's one, one comment per person. 
Um, and so is there any anybody else on the line who would like to make a comment before we move on? Okay. So as I just mentioned, I'm going to show a couple of screens here. I'll show that screen before about making additional comments. Um, and then I'm going to put uh, Carol's and, and Mary Vanderlaan's contact information up there um, in case you have additional questions. And again, we have one comment per person uh, for the hearing tonight. So with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to invite, I don't see any other hands raised. So we're gonna go ahead and invite Carol. Uh, do you wanna read the closing statement? Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks everyone for the comments tonight. Um, and we appreciate your interest in the proposed project and that the time you took to be here tonight to give us some other insights into this parcel. As indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you can submit your additional written comments until February the 7th. And following the close of the public comment period, we'll consider the comments received and make a decision on this project. The hearing is now closed and we thank you again. Staff will be available for questions, I believe, for a couple minutes. All right, so uh, before we get to that, um, yeah, other ways to submit a, an official comment are uh, through my waters, like I had mentioned before, and I think Matt put some more information in the chat by mail. The Eagle Water Resources Division, Lansing District Office at 525 West Elegan Street, Lansing, Michigan, 48909. Um, for anybody who wants to write that down, comment period after this public hearing will be open for 10 days, which is February 7th. All right, and it sounds like Carol is would be open to any additional questions at this point, though the public hearing part is over. I'm putting, con I'm putting the contact information for Carol uh, and Mary Vanderlaan up here in case, I'll leave that up here in case you want to write it down. Are there, I guess, any additional questions uh, at this point? You're also welcome to contact Carol uh, via this information here. Um, and as mentioned before, this a public hearing is being recorded. So, uh, you'll be able to access it in a couple of days on YouTube in case you wanted to review it and have additional comments. So it doesn't look like I have any other questions up right now. Like I said, Matt's putting information in the chat. So I guess with that, the last thing that I wanted to, to mention is, or ask is uh, Mary Vanderlaan, who's a district supervisor, Water Resources Division in Lansing. Uh, we were having technical some issues with her cam or her camera um, before. Mary, did you want to say any closing comments for us today? Uh, yeah, uh, I thank everybody for participating in this uh, virtual event. I realize that it's not the common way of participating in a public hearing, but uh, I'm glad that we had as many people provide their comments as possible. And uh, Carol or I would be more than happy to discuss some of the issues that came up in as comments. Uh, if you wanna contact us either by email or through phone. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Uh, another good tip is if you could just take a picture of the screen if you'd like and you can re refer to it later or write it down. Uh, but that that concludes uh, the public hearing for tonight. You know, thank you again, like Mary said, for being part of this process um, and for everybody for making the comments tonight and for being part of this. Uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening.